Hello and welcome to the second course of the BitBadges Udemy introduction course. This course will focus more on the token standard and what all you can do with badges and tokens and, um, and everything from that standpoint. So in the scope of everything, the we will focus on this, the tokens or badges, um, as opposed to anything else in this course. Um, this is super feature rich and we like to claim that it's 100x the functionality of existing token standards. Um, and it's super state of the art, built from the ground up with our own blockchain. And we did it in a way that um, we didn't take on any tech debt. So yes, we're not compatible with you know existing token standards and stuff like that. In some places we are, but not overall. Um, but we aim to do it the right way. Um, and make it as feature-rich as possible, make it as native as possible, no smart contracts by default, although you can extend it with smart contracts on chain, but that's an advanced topic. Um, we want everything to be super easy to use, but also complex enough to support any use case. So our goal is to just continually ever, um, ever evolve the token standard to support more features, support more use cases, and so on. So if you have anything that you have in mind that might improve the token standard, let us know. But um, it is pretty feature rich already, and in this course, we'll go into some of the details about what all you can do with the token standard. So, um, just a couple of highlighted things, or the main new like innovative features from the token standard is that it's multi chain compatible. So, users from any chain can own and transfer the same token. So, this means that an Ethereum user and a Solana user can own and transfer and do anything with the same token. Um, so, this is kind of novel in the crypto industry because you know, you don't need, um, for in existing state-of-the-art, you have an Ethereum token and you have a Solana token, both on different blockchains, and they're not compatible with each other. With BitBadges, we make this um, all in one place and compatible and transferable between users from different chains natively. We also support on-chain balances, like you might think of, but off-chain balances are a super neat um, feature. Sure, they have some trade-offs, but it can be very scalable and a lot more user friendly. Um, so it's depending on your use case, you might choose to implement server or implement balances on a server or rather than the blockchain, save space, save um, hassle and so on. So we'll get into that a little more on the pros and cons of each. We also support time dependent balances. So with time dependent, um, maybe you can own a badge for only a month or a week or a, a day even. Um, so this can be used to implement, you know, like maybe token unlocks or subscriptions that expire after a month and so on. And much more that we'll get into. Um, again, like I said, it's super complex. We like to claim it's 100x the functionality of existing ones. Existing ones are pretty much just tra transfer mint um, and burn. This supports all that plus a lot, lot more. So let's, um in this lecture, it'll be more of like a high-level overview and then Throughout the course, we'll get further into depth with more developer-oriented stuff. So if we just go to the BitBadges examples collection, you can see here. Um, so there's a difference between the collection and the individual badges themselves. In this case, the collection is BitBadges examples, and each there are 20 badges in this collection. Each badge will have its own ID, and each collection will have its own ID. So as you can see here, the collection ID is one for bit badge for this, and then each badge will have its own individual badge ID. So um, they're all numeric and support like and support range logic. So for example, you can transfer badge IDs one to twenty as easy as you can transfer badge um, one. So a little more into the management of the collection. Um, all collections can have a manager, which can execute certain admin privileges like um, updating the transferability, updating the metadata, and so on. Um, the manager can be transferred if permissions allow. It can be unset. You can disable certain permissions. And also, permissions are fine grainable. So for example, you might, um, it doesn't show it here, but like um, you might lock the metadata or freeze the metadata for like certain badges, but not others. Or you can freeze the transferability for certain badges or not others, or certain addresses or not others. Um, so super customizable in that sense. Um, metadata is kind of, it's similar to how you might, if you're familiar with existing tokens or um, NFTs, it's similar to that. We host it externally. 
Um, there is a place on chain where you can host it, but for scalability reasons, we host it off chain and name, description, image are required. But then there's a bunch of other features like, um, you know, that you can add like utility attributes and so on. Um, And yeah, so each badge can have its own metadata. Each badge can have its own like specific permissions, um, and so on. So that's kind of like the overarching management of the collection side. Um, but then the distribution is kind of where we gain so much of the um, benefits of our token standard. So distribution can be on chain, as you see here. So for example. Um, you can see that all transfers take place on chain and must be approved on the collection level, have sufficient about sufficient balances, and be approved on the user level where necessary. So let's break that down. There are two levels, or you can think of it kind of as three, but the collection level. So these are set by the collection manager. All transfers must satisfy at least one collection approval. So this can be, for example, um, you know, post minting. You might be transferable, and then all. Transfers would be satisfied by this approval. For minting, you have to satisfy this approval. Um, and on the collection level, you can choose to obey the user level approvals or override them. So in this case, we must satisfy the recipient's incoming approvals, but you could override them in certain cases as well. Um, with on-chain, you can, there are certain criteria that you can set. So in this case, um, you know, you can just read through the criteria. It's only valid from these times on. You have um, anyone can initiate, anyone can receive it, anyone or only the mint address can send. These can also be combined with off chain claims or um, criteria. And so you can create very complex claim flows for on chain tokens. It kind of bridges that gap between Web2 integrations and on-chain tokens. So as you see here, I know it's a lot, but um, there's a, you can check all of its criteria off-chain, check all this criteria on-chain, and then when they transfer the badge, um, you must, you know, it gates the approval to who can transfer the badge to um, who meets the criteria. So you also might have user level approvals. There's both incoming and outgoing. So outgoing gates who can transfer on your behalf, and then incoming gates who can transfer to you. Um, so by default, you're always, you know, approved to transfer to yourself and always approved to transfer um, balances from your portfolio. But you can customize this however you want to, you know, maybe maybe you do like opt-in only incoming approvals. So only you, mu you must be the initiator of all transfers coming to you. Um, and this follows the same interface as before. So for example, you can customize stuff on chain, as opposed to add, st add claim criteria off chain and check stuff off chain as well. And it's all um, linked together in one, one interface. So with on chain badges, um, the mint address has kind of has unlimited balances. So all the whole circulating supply will originate from the mint address, and you um, it kind of just goes from there. So once they're kind of in circulation, then you have to have sufficient balances and for each transfer and so on. So if you're confused, just come to the badge collection page and just, you know, browse the criteria, see what is needed, what is not to be able to transfer. And it'll it'll warn you, it'll fail if you are not allowed to. So on-chain is one of the ways that we gate criteria or gate um, sore balances, sorry. The other way is off-chain. So let's say, let's go to the badges beta thing. As you can see here, um, balances are actually stored. Let me refresh that. Off-chain. Um, so instead of you know transfers on-chain, um, approvals on-chain, all the balances are just stored on a centralized server, as you see here. So we map everything to a Cosmos address for these off-chain balances. And then you can see that we're um, it defines how much each balance or each address owns via this endpoint, and it just hosts it on a centralized server, in this case, DigitalOcean. So as you see here, um, it looks the exact same as on-chain in terms of like owners and circulating and stuff like that. 
um, but the actual imbalances are managed and signed off chain. So one of the benefits of this is actually that you can, you know, it's basically cost free to update balances on off chain because you just update the server as opposed to update stuff on the blockchain. So um, super, a lot more scalable, a lot more user friendly also because transfers and approvals take place off chain as opposed to on chain. So there's no need to interact with the blockchain. So. Um, so yeah, there's that, and that this can also be customized with the claim interface via the create tab um, to auto assign if they meet certain criteria and so on. And the last balance type that we'll go into is um, on demand. So as you can see, we this is the on demand type, and pretty much instead of you know storing a full ledger, full map of addresses to balances, we calculate it on the go, on the fly. So as you see here, I don't, this address hasn't interacted with Ethereum, but um, you can see that like Vitalik, we search it on demand, and then you can see that based on their first transaction, we assign, we assign certain balances to the user um, just on the go. So if this, if the criteria, or if the user no longer meets the criteria, they would just not have the balances anymore in an instant because we auto check it on demand. So yeah, that's a high-level high overview. I know it's a, it's a lot, um, and we'll go into more depth in the coming lectures.